Hello, this is Hound4004. The first snapshot for the Caves and Cliffs update has released. This is 20W45A, and there's a lot to go through today, so sit back and enjoy as I go through what's new in this here snapshot. So, there's a lot to go through, so let's get started. I will go through everything in the best of my abilities, and there's actually quite a bit. This is a bigger snapshot again, so let's go. There is a new block called Candle Blocks. I mean, you can you can have green candles, you can have any colored candles. These blocks have no crafting recipe yet, but they are pretty nice and cool. They can float in midair, and they act a lot like sea pickles. So let's go ahead and maybe grab some black candles. You can place one, two, three, four in a bundle, or four, four in a block, right? So it acts a lot like sea pickles, but it's different colored. And hey, can you put sea pickle on fire? No, no, you can't. You grab some flint and steel, right? And not burn down your house. No, you light the candles like a good person and have a sheep get in the way. You can ha light every single one of these candles and it'll be a nice little colorful torch made of wax. Like I said earlier, there's no way to craft these at this point in time. I mean, obviously sometime, some way, they will be obtainable. But this is actually pretty cool to have some nice candles in many different colors. That being said, that's it for this part of the candles. This is really awesome though, I gotta admit. There's a new ore, copper ore. It is found literally anywhere underground. It, it spawns like any normal ore. So you can find it anywhere. You can find it in the depths. You can find it really anywhere. So this generation will change, kind of like how they talked about at Minecon with kind of like maybe different groupings. Uh, kind of the way they generate this it will change, but for now it's like your average ore. So you find these underground and you go ahead and grab yourself some copper ore, right? You grab your copper ore because you want some copper. Well, it comes in an ore and you go ahead and smelt it in the furnace, right? It, it smelts, it's an ore. Nice looking ore too. And then you can craft many, many different blocks. Now of course these blocks will oxidize over time. So here's the different versions, and for now, there's four oxidation states. I don't know if that'll change or not. So this copper ore will take 50 to 82 Minecraft days, when, of course, like, you're in loaded chunks, you're in the area where the copper is placed. It'll take 50 to 82 days for a copper block to oxidize, only to the next stage. So if you have four different stages, and it takes 50 to 82 days per stage, I mean, that that takes a lot of days, and that really does show your progress in your game. So with iron, of course, also comes the most anticipated thing on my watch list for the snapshot is the lightning rod. You go ahead and you, you take some copper ingots, very laggily, and you go ahead and throw it in a crafting table. So you go ahead and place it like three here, making a rod, and you'll get your lightning rod. So here's what it looks like, looks nice and cool, kind of like a <laughs> lightning rod. We're gonna go head up here and set the weather to be nice and rainy, although I probably shouldn't do it right next to a savannah mine. So here we have the new location for our lightning rod. If you didn't know, it does not rain or storm in the savannah biome. So we're gonna move it right over here to the plains. So we're gonna go ahead and set the weather to thunder. And let's see what happens when some lightning strikes. So I'm pretty close to the lightning rod, I'd say. So I'm gonna do a summoning lightning bolt. So I am over here, the lightning rod is right over there. If I summon a lightning bolt right over here, it should hopefully go to the lightning rod. No, no it didn't. Uh, hmm. If I move a bit closer... Well, I've been sitting here trying to make this work and it's obviously not going to... Maybe it's not fully developed or working yet, but you get the gist of it, and I'll go over it when it actually does work. So, for now, we'll just leave it at that, and go on to our next feature. So, we're gonna go ahead and jump down 
deep into the caves to our new naturally spawning thing. This is the Amethyst Geode. Many new blocks that will go over here. You can kind of see it here for yourself, but this is the tough block. It is the outer edges of this Amethyst Geode. Then we got the Calicut, which is kind of the inner nice white part. And so far, these two, they're just this. They spawn here. This is all they do. They don't have any slabs or stairs or any interesting variants. Hopefully, we may be able to see something interesting for them in the future. But, I mean, it's always nice to kind of have a nice uh, stony-looking block. And it's always nice to have something white that's better than diorite. So, this is the Amethyst Geo, of course, again. We go in into this chest to kind of go over it more. We have the block of amethyst, and we have the budding amethyst. You can kind of see, like, when, when we find one with a crystal, it has the budding texture on it. Of course, though, uh, we, we can't make it ourselves, but that's kind of what's going on with the budding amethyst block. The amethyst has a couple stages here. It has small amethyst bud, medium amethyst bud, large amethyst bud, and then the final variant, the amethyst cluster. So we're going to go ahead and grab this pickaxe, and we're going to hop in to survival mode, okay? So we're going to find right here one of these amethyst clusters. We break it, and ooh, shiny. We got four amethyst shards. What the heck do amethyst shards do? Well, for now, they have a couple of functions. We'll be able to go and craft a couple of things. But first, you break these blocks, it works. But you will not be able to get these and move these to make these amethyst buds go anywhere else. Here we have some breaking amethyst. As you can see, it's the one that actually spawns the crystals and we break it. It, it doesn't. It doesn't pick up as an item. It's a creative mode only item that's obtainable. So it's kind of a shame that we can't find these and move these, but it, it's definitely kind of cool. It's This is nice. This is really pretty, and let's go see what it's able to craft. So here, there is a brand new block. It is called Tinted Glass. So we're going to grab ourselves some of these amethyst shards and some glass. Hop into a crafting table, put the glass in the middle of the crafting table, surround it by these amethyst crystals, and boom, first try, here we have our tinted glass. This glass is obtainable, like, you, if you know normal glass, you try to obtain it with just your fist instead of silk touch, it's gonna shatter. But this glass, no. It does not shatter when you try to break it with your fist in survival. Now why is it called tinted glass? Well, it is glass that does not let light through. You can see through it fine, but it does not let light through. So I'm gonna go in this box of tinted glass, and I take these two pieces, and I put this up. As you can see, it actually goes dark with the light level in here. You can see right through it, but it does not let any light through. Now, another thing using amethyst, we go back in time to when we discovered the copper ore. Well, this is how you craft our new thing, the spyglass. Now, for all you Optifine users, this is still maybe a bit better. I mean, Optifine Plus, this is probably a bit OP. So you see that button over there just fine, right? But can you count every pixel on this button? I doubt it. But we go ahead and left click with this spyglass. We go up here. There is the button. Now that, that is actually, that, that's on the other side of the river. Well, I guess that's not too far. Count all those pixels on that mountain clear back over there. There's the spyglass. Clear over there. I mean, look at that, that's, that's a little ways away. I mean, it's not too far away, but, like, you can really count block for block over there, so that's, that is quite far. And for all you non-Optifine users, this is actually pretty cool. Now, one of the things that was announced at Minecon was the bundle. Now, let's say, oh gee, I have all these flowers on me, whatever shall I do? I'm gonna click on every single one of these, put them in the bundle. And you can see the bar slowly fills up as we put more items in it. 
and we have now bundles full of these flowers. Do not put items that are only stackable to one, like the spyglass, in the bundle. So like this will not work with armor or stuff, but this is how the bundle functions for now. So all these items will now fit in one bundle in the inventory slot. This bundle, however, now does not have a crafting recipe at this early first snapshot here. To get all the items back out, you just left click the bundle in your hotbar. And throw it into our next item, the brand new lava cauldron. Of course, this is a bedrock parody. Hopefully soon now we'll get dyed cauldrons to dye our leather armor. But for now, we have this nice lava cauldron. Of course, you can take a bucket, scoop it out, take a bucket, put it in. And when you have lava in the cauldron, it'll emit a redstone signal of one. So there you have your lava cauldron of fun. All rails can now be waterlogged, and you can ride a minecart underwater until you drown yourself to death. Sounds like fun to me. And finally, we go ahead and take one of these netherite shovels, or any kind of shovel, and here we have different types of blocks of dirt. We go ahead, and we can now turn them all into graph paths, but it's actually now called dirt path because of the way it now works, and go with it. So that was everything really truly big for most players in this here snapshot. There are some technical changes and some bugs. So the technical changes are entities now saved separately from terrain chunks. So that's like the different terrains will now save entities. So instead of just saying, oh, in this area there is some pigs. No, now chunk by chunk it'll save what animals are in what chunks. There is now a loot table function, which is set underscore banner underscore pattern. Then, pack format in versions.json file has been split into data in resource versions. And servers can now require custom resource packs to be accepted. And then, going on with that, a dedicated server can enforce custom resource packs by setting required resource packs in the server properties folder. When this option is used, players will be promoted for a response and will be disconnected if they decline the required pack. So there is now a crap ton of bugs, I mean that is way too many for anybody to go over in a big video like this, so I'm going to let you read it for yourselves. These bugs in this entire article on everything that is new will all be in the description below so you can read over the bugs if your heart desires but that was everything in this first caves and cliffs snapshot for the java edition of course this update will be re released summer of next year or at least that's the planned release date and I am super excited for these snapshots to truly get going and all that good stuff. I hope though this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, th this is everything in this snapshot. So for now, this is how 4004 saying goodbye.